She escaped you, but I'll find her. We'll come back here together and kill you. Your return, you shall. Our fates are bound. And one will die. But it shan't be one of us. Now you shall chase shadows and wander midst fog. Each time you see her, she will be a mirage. And if you find her, if the girl <laughs> will die, you see you, handsome knight. <laughs> Welcome back to another Witcher lore video. Today's video is going to be on probably one of the most requested videos I've ever had. So, as you can tell from the title and the comments, so today's video is going to be on the Crones. So to begin with, some basic info on the Crones. The Crones, also known as the Ladies of the Wood, are three witches who live in the swamps of Velen. Their home is known as Crookback Bog. Now most of you will probably know this because you'll have played The Witcher 3, you'll have done the mission as it's one of the main missions in The Witcher 3 called, I believe it's the Ladies of the Wood where you discover the ears and you discover the children and it's a whole ordeal but that's basically where they're from. So the crones are called the Weavess, the Brewess and the Wispess and I'm not sure if I'm saying that correctly because I haven't heard anyone actually say their names for a long time but I'm assuming that's how they're said. So next, the crones are actually ancient and are said to have been around since the reign of the first human kings and possibly even since the coming of the elves. So they are ancient, they are one of the most ancient creatures within the Witcher universe, alongside, I'd say, probably Gauntredim and the Higher Vampires. So, their creator is known as the Lady of the Wood, or, as she is now more commonly known, the Ghost in the Tree. So you may remember this as there's an entire quest line surrounding it, if you've never done this option before, you can actually have it turn into a black horse and it saves the children, etc. There's a lot that goes into it, but for now, let's just call her the Lady of the Wood. So as the story goes, this spirit arrived from far away and created the crones from dust. All four of them then watched over the land of Velen together. So now I'm going to go into the history of the crones, and this is from their creation which I've just explained, to the start of The Witcher 3. I'm going to try and not go massively into The Witcher 3 story as it's kind of pointless as you'll all have played The Witcher 3 and will know what it is, but I might touch on it lightly. This is basically information for when you're about to start The Witcher 3. So, the crones and the Lady of the Wood protected, inverted commas, the locals, they demanded tribute for the continued prosperity of Velen. So what would happen is that anytime anything bad would happen, they'd go to the crones and they'd say, hey, can you help us out? They'd use their magic, they'd help them out. Sometimes they would even cause some of the problems, it's thought, and then they would use their magic to fix it, therefore sort of cementing their power even more. And in exchange for this, the villagers would bring them grain and sometimes even men. This is before the crones became just as they were. This is when they were sort of the toadies of the Lady of the Wood, who is, as we know, the tree. So it's said that they brought them grain and men. So this next piece of information is gathered from a book known as She Who Knows, and it's quite widely disputed if this information is actually correct, because it could have just been made up by the crones <laughs> to make their creator seem worse than she she actually was, as it's believed that this book was written by somebody who probably worshipped the crones in some sort of way as they wrote an entire book about them, so it's very possible that um, the next piece of information coming up might not be true. But we'll take it as fact for this video. So anyway, to continue, eventually the Lady of the Wood began to slip more and more into madness and actually began to start destroying Velen. So the crones killed her and imprisoned her spirit in a tree, which is the tree you meet in The Witcher 3. So after their creator's death, the crones became the true sovereigns of Velen and helped its inhabitants to survive through hardships at the price of unquestioning obedience. The crones actually work in a very similar way to Gaunter Odim, and ask that for every request they have a price. For example, the Baron's wife needed help, so they made her a deal that in exchange for her child being stillborn and her being able to get away from the Baron, she would actually become their slave. She just wanted it to sort of be magically removed, she didn't realise she'd still have to give birth to it and it'd just be dead, which is horrible. What in fact happened actually is the crones used their magic to cause the fetus to basically suck the life out of her, if that makes sense. So as the fetus sucked the life out of her and the fetus died by doing this, it would not only kill her spirit and sort of take away a lot of what makes her her, but it would also die and wither away is what it was described as. So Anna, which is the woman known as Gran in The Witcher, she actually 
had a talisman from the Pella because she sensed that this was dark magic, but the Baron, after he beat her one time, she lost this talisman and that's why she ended up being captured by the crones. So, funnily enough, the history and the story of the crones past the destruction of their creator and the start of The Witcher 3 is just them ruling over Velen. Nothing particularly important happened. It would cause a bunch of sort of problems. They might fix a bunch of problems that aren't their fault. And that's kind of how it would all work. Up until the start of The Witcher 3, no one really opposed them. So there's not much more to say about their history. However, there is one event that always puzzled me, and as I was making this video, I've come to understand it in much more detail, as when it happened in The Witcher 3, it wasn't exactly explained, it was it was just sort of name dropped, then it was a mission, so I'm sure some of you will find this next piece of information very, very interesting. So I'm going to get into the details of the event known as the Sabbath, which is the event in which, spoiler alert for The Witcher 3, which is the event in which you kill Imloreth and the Crones, as Ciri and Geralt. So for those of you that don't know the full story, the Sabbath is an event in which the Crones invite all of Velen to a large kind of party, which celebrates the rule of the Crones. In some occasions, they even invite important evildoers, such as Imloreth. Every year, the peasants converge at Bald Mountain and present three beautiful youths to the crones. Peasants were actually under the impression that if they sent three beautiful youths up to the mountain, that they would be returned with the ladies' enlightenment. But what Geralt and Ciri soon discover is that the youths are being chopped up and eaten in a stew by the crones, who love to devour young and strong blood. So what would happen is, the day after the crones have eaten these youths and killed them, they would shapeshift into the eaten youths and return home with the families of the eaten youths. So, they would appear to be incredibly happy and enlightened and everything like that, but after a short while, they would actually state to the families that they wanted to leave as the Crones Enlightenment has shown them how they could gain riches and see the world, so they leave Velen forever. However, we know this isn't true and that's just an excuse for the Crones to return to Crookback Bog, as the youths are already dead, but at least the families don't know. So as I said, the Sabbath is an annual thing, it occurs every single year. This is basically what happens every year. They bring tribute, grain, etc. They bring the youths, they have a party, they celebrate the Crones' rule. That's what the Sabbath is. So for the final part of today's video, I'll go over each individual crone and then read The Witcher 3 journal entry on them as a whole. As that journal entry does cover a lot of what I've said in this video, but it also covers a couple other things that I left out. So first, the Weavis if I'm saying that correctly, or the Weavess. <laughs> so to begin with, she is the youngest of the crones. So the Weavess was the one who wove the magical tapestries made of human hair. Uh, this hair was actually gathered from the young people of Velen after their cutting ceremonies, and this is a ceremony in which they cut children's hair and then present it to the crones. So these tapestries were actually used as a way for the people of Velen to get in contact with the crones, and were also used as a way for them to pay homage to them. So that's what the Weavess did. And after the fight on Bald Mountain, the Weavess was the only crone to escape Ciri's soul. She does actually steal Ciri's medallion that Ciri took from Vesemir. So if Ciri dies at the end of The Witcher 3, Geralt hunts down the Weavers and actually kills her just to take Vesemir's medallion back. But if Ciri lives, this just doesn't happen. It's a bit confusing as to why. Maybe Geralt didn't think it was worth risking his life. But anyway, that's the Weavers. So next, the Brewers. This is the middle child of the Crones. And their in-house expert on magical mixtures and recipes for human soup. So she was slain by Ciri as well at the events of Bald Mountain, and that's all I have to say on her. So finally, the Whispers, who is actually the oldest of the crones. She's very interesting as she demands tribute in the form of human ears. None of the other crones actually require human ears. The entire process of humans giving their ears to the crones is for her and her alone. So you may be thinking, why does she want human ears? That's a bit strange. Everything else has a purpose. Well, so does her wanting human ears. So what she does is, is she uses primeval magic on the ears and strings them up on trees all around the swamps of Velen. And she uses the ears as a way to hear everything that goes on in Velen so they're always prepared for if anybody tries to, I don't know, dethrone them. So after the events on Bald Mountain, she is actually killed by Ciri. So now for the final part of the video, I'm going to read the bestiary entry on the crones. Sister crones, hand in hand, terrors of the sea and land, thus do go about, about, thrice to thine, and thrice to mine, and thrice again, to make up nine. Macbeth, Act 1, Scene 3. The isolated corners of our world harbour creatures older than humans, older than academies and mages, older even than elves and dwarves. The crones of Crookback Bog are such creatures. No one knows their true names, nor what breed of monstrosity they in fact are. Common folk have given these three sisters the names Weavis, Brewis, and whispers, and call the threesome the Ladies of the Wood, or simply the Good Ladies. The crones act as the true sovereigns of Velen, whose inhabitants they help survive through harsh times in return for unquestioning obedience. They wield powerful magic, but one different from that of mages. They draw power from water and earth, 
and are bound to the land in which they live. The crones can hear everything that happens in their woods, predict the future, twist the threads of human lives, and bring blessings as well as curses. The crones seem, for all intents and purposes, to be immortal. Magic elixirs keep them from aging and allow them to take the appearance of young women. These elixirs and their mystical ties to the swamps in which they live also give them supernatural strength and vitality. So that's all I wanted to say on the crones today. I hope you've learned something new. If not, I hope you enjoyed the video at least. As I've said before, be sure to follow my Twitch. I'm trying to stream on there more, but I've been very, very busy the past few days. I play Ark on there, I play Gwen, I play so many cool games, and I'm sure you'll all enjoy them. Also, be sure to follow my Twitter, see if we can get to 100 followers. I post videos on there automatically. I tell everybody about new things I plan to do on there, or at least that's where I'll be telling people about it. I'll be doing Q&As on there at some point, so it'll be very interesting if you want to learn more about The Witcher, so yeah, be sure to follow me on Twitter. Also, be sure to join the Discord, it's a big community now with over 160 members of fellow Witcher lovers, you can post your little collections of Witcher figures or your collections of other fandoms you like, you can do Gwent challenges on there, we now have a new text channel open to that, so if you want to challenge somebody on Gwent, stick your user in there or just try and find someone and you'll have a little DM with them and then you can post the results in the Gwent channel if you want. And as always, a big, big thank you to the Patreon pledges, you guys are honestly amazing, thank you so much for today. You guys are awesome. As if you donate on Patreon to me, only a dollar you get the rank of Grandmaster in the Discord. You get to find out what the videos are a day early. I'm thinking of even doing special videos for Patreon pledges, such as when I record these types of videos, I record a lot more than I actually need to, and it's purely to get to the cutscenes. So, for example, I have my full All Gear Death March battle, and I may put that on Patreon at some point. But for anybody that donates on Patreon, you get the rank of Grandmaster in the Discord. You find out what videos are a day early. You get to have the special Grandmaster chat, which is quite fun. And yeah, you get your name at the end of every single single video. So anyway, big thank you to all the Patreon pledges, you guys are the best. But anyway guys, have an awesome week, and I'll see you all later.